Yes, because after three months of working with him, from semi-final, fifth place. Whoa. Three months. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to this new series. For the first time on my channel, we are doing a podcast. And of course, I am not alone. Please welcome to the channel, Mr. Fedya Isayev. Hi everyone, hello guys. Thank you, Mateo, for inviting me. It's my pleasure. So, it's my pleasure too. But we know each other a long time. Uh, so, I don't have to ask you who you are and why you're here because of me, but I think it will be nice if uh, we say something about you and your career your past career uh, in ballroom to our audience so they know your level your quality and why they have to believe you and what you will say in this podcast well i'm uh, who am i i'm a dancer just a ballroom dancer um had lucky to dance with uh, one of the best partners in the world the beautiful anna and together we've been able to achieve few uh, quite uh, good results uh, we won uh, Blackpool as an amateur two times. We won uh, UK International Championship two times as well. We won World Championship for four times, uh, European ones, and um, uh, we are representing Russia and uh, always have been represented Russia. And uh, we won, I think, 12 titles, being, uh, yeah, we're 12 time Russian champion quite a lot you know yeah but it's just numbers and uh, it's just for my mom honestly <laughs> yeah guys but actually numbers they don't come by themselves and that's why I asked him to introduce himself because we are going to talk about couple relation and uh, when a guy like him danced all his life and achieved so much what he will be uh, telling you, then it comes from real, real experience, not just from uh, some lecture or some teacher that he heard from or from some book or some video like now. So let's introduce the subject of the day and the first video of the podcast. We will be talking about couple relation. What is a couple? How to believe in your partner? How to be a strong couple, a winning couple and all what is connected to this subject. Mm -hmm. So, what is your idea about that? How can we uh, build a team together with our partner and to be successful? What is the base? Mm, base of the team. Uh, first of all, I just want to say that uh, for me it was uh, probably one of the most difficult things in uh, the whole career. Because uh, in the end I realized that uh, dancing part is an easy part. <laughs> and uh, to be able to communicate and try and to create something together. This is the most difficult part. And uh, I spoke with many, many champions about this and they all, I think, agree with this. So everyone, I think, should learn some techniques, some qualities, maybe trying to find their own way how to achieve this, like you said, team uh, work. Uh, the base for me of the good successful team would be a few things first is a similar goal so just if we, if we're working together we're obviously trying to uh, look at the same direction mm -hmm. and um, here i'm lucky i never had these problems we together with anna always was dedicated to become very successful professional dancers cool. uh, but i can see it in my students sometimes and uh, in other couples that uh, especially when uh, kids are growing if you meet a mature guy 25 no problem mm -hmm. before mm, sometimes uh, you can see that uh, boy and girl have uh, different uh, goals different beliefs and uh, therefore uh, and that's why decisions they make on this path sometimes not helping to achieve uh, good results. So first thing would be uh, look at the same direction, have the same goal. Cool. So if we, today we're gonna build a kind of a checklist, this for you is gonna be in the first place. So I don't know, tick, maybe. Tick number one, you mm -hmm. have to find a partner that has your same goals. Or mm -hmm. if you already have a partner, then make sure that she or he has your same goals. You can you can move to the same direction. Cool. Uh, I just want to add, it mm, should not be exactly the same goals. Of course, we have all different needs, but at least you need to have some points where you can together achieve uh, similar ideas. 
Cool. So once we have a team or a couple, let's talk about couple because team mm-hmm. in uh, in ballroom dancing it sounds too too artificial because we are actually a couple. Okay. Mm-hmm. When we have a couple that have a common uh, goal, mm-hmm. what is the next step? How we should work together? What is the mindset and uh, how to avoid those kind of problems or misunderstandings? Or one in couple is. Uh, um, higher than the other, but I'm not talking about level quality mm-hmm, and mm-hmm, dancing mm-hmm. quality. I'm talking uh, the one who is the boss in couple. Sometimes, actually, many times it happens. So, how to avoid those kind of problems that uh, are actually so common in our world? Yeah, like the way you said this uh, about boss. Yeah, I <laughs> I was thinking a lot about this. By the way, uh, is it so necessary to have a boss in the couple? That was my question to this uh, thing. Uh, well. Um, it depends by the the character of, uh, of each dancer. If they both are not able to take um, a decision, mm-hmm. then it's bad. True. But from the other side, on the other side, it's also bad when they both are strong and they cannot communicate each other. They cannot find a common way. Mm-hmm. So, what is the what is the key? I believe that uh, each part of the couple, so boy and girl, should try to make themselves the best version of themselves. It's a bit of a cliche, but what I'm trying to say is uh, um, if you are doing 100% and I'm doing 100%, together we're kind of doing 200%. And uh, I know for sure that you know better how to do your 100% than me. What I mean, I have an idea what you need to do to become better. But you are inside your body. So you know what to do for you better than me. I have a rough idea. I can uh, guide, I can suggest something to my partner. uh, But uh, she's a dancer and she's a professional dancer. So she's a goddamn knows how to do the thing. So basically we are going to the the trust each other zone. So it's like uh, if you choose to be in couple with a person, Mm -hmm. then you cannot uh, pretend to teach him or her and... uh, in this way, as you said, I do my 100%, you do your 100%, together we are stronger than as we can ever be. But um, I, I continue asking this question because uh, I think that uh, people who open this video, uh, where it's written couple relation, they are actually looking for, in my, in my, in my opinion, the key to success. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm keeping uh, asking you. So what is the what is the base to to build a couple? What is the key of success? Because I think that uh, if from your experience you can give the main idea, so the mm-hmm. the steps mm-hmm. that you have to mm-hmm. do mm-hmm. to be successful, then it will be the key of this video. But success again, success it can be different for everyone. Someone want to become a champion. Some just want to go. And mm-hmm. that's a competition first time in his life. So goals can be different. But to achieve those goals, no matter where they are, you have to be a good couple. I mean, a strong couple together with your partner. Mm-hmm. So we said that you have to be your best version and you have to trust your partner. And this is very difficult. So we can say that this is the second point. Yes, it's okay. the second point. I would like to unfold it a bit more about trust because uh, it's easy to say, but very difficult to do. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about this, why it's so difficult to trust your partner. And my conclusion was that uh, because sometimes we are afraid to lose control of the situation. And uh, it can be um, toxic, I don't know how to say, because uh, sometimes how much I want to control. Uh, And uh, we have an illusion that we can control everything sometimes. But this is an illusion we can control very little things. And uh, I, have, um, I have a nice quote about this. What, uh, what do you think? What controls the quality of your life? What do you think about this? Oh my God, that's a difficult question. Like now to answer, what controls the quality, quality of, of my life? life? life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it money? I think it's the balance between expectation and what you get. Because even if you get a lot, but your expectation continue, continue growing, then you mm. will never be happy and mm-hmm. you will live like with poor quality. Instead, if you gain a lot and your uh, expectation stayed at the same initial level, then you feel happy and then you feel that you are living the life of your dreams. 
So mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. uh, takes a different taste. The, uh, yeah, and, and I don't know if I answered to your question like yeah. the way you expected, but now at this moment of my life, I feel that uh, that is the kind of, of answer that I would give you. But when we want to achieve quality in a couple life, then I don't know if my answer still is, uh, still has sense. That's why. Yeah, you, you say it beautifully. I just want to, um, um, yeah, I just want to put a bit more in this point. Uh, I was also thinking that uh, what control the quality of the life and uh, is it money? No, I don't think it's money. For example, if uh, I remember when you don't have money, uh, you have a lot of problems. And then suddenly when you have some money, uh, you have just different problems, but you still have problems. If you, uh, for example, have uh, no time, you are a very uh, disappointed person. If you have uh, too many time, still you're not happy. You have no wife, uh, big problem. You have wife, big I don't problem. Need to say. <laughs> I don't need to say <laughs> Other problems. <laughs> so uh, probably it's not about situations in your life. It's not about controlling the situations around you. It's about your perception of the situation. So how you react to that. Yeah, exactly. So this is the only little thing that you can actually control. The way you see the world. The world will change around you all the time. The situation in the um, uh, competition changes every time. When you practice, everything changes every time. Mm -hmm. And uh, you need to build this uh, kind of muscle inside you, uh, how you are reacting to the situations. Because, as I just described, Exactly the same situation can be absolute can lead to absolutely different um, conclusions for different people. Cool. We can give some examples. Uh, um, yeah, I don't I don't want to talk about the results because on the next video maybe someday <laughs> you will see our video about results. We are giving too many spoilers actually. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm Cut. joking. Uh, but. Um, yeah, for example, you, a little bit about results, you made the final for the first time, you're happy. You made a final for a ten time, you feel nothing. But it's the same thing, you are in the final. So co context and uh, how you per perceive the reality is a very, very important thing. And that's uh, the key for me, for the couple relationship. Because I know. I can't change what she think. I can't change what how she dance. I can only change how am I doing if if I'm professional. This is difficult to change yourself, but to change other person it's just impossible. You can lead, you can man try to manipulate, play these games, but it's in the end it's just not uh, yeah, professional. We all do think that actually because mm -hmm. I I can challenge anybody watching this video that you never actually thought to change your partner ideas or mindset or uh, quality dancing quality uh, it's impossible because we are human we want to achieve a better result so at least few times in your career you had the idea i'm gonna say her or him uh, what to do i better know what to do listen to me you know nothing so happens to everybody but then as you are saying you have to be professional mm -hmm. you have to step back and say how really I can help not only her but me as well. So I can help the couple really by teaching her something. So this is the the key point. I know it's easy to say. <laughs> I I'm still working a lot, and uh, Felia knows because we work on uh, dance psychology dance psychology with him. So he knows how difficult for us is it, it is this. So I'm still working on it, but to, to to talk about it, it's a little bit actually easier. And for you that you may actually never heard about it and you are watching this video and listening these things for the first time, I guess that for you it's kind of uh, refreshing and inspiring because maybe in this moment of your career you are stuck in a situation that you don't go, you don't have high result, you don't go back because in dancing we know that once you are in that kind of level, you almost can stay in that level until, you're, until you're, you're the end of your career. But you feel like frustrated because you put a lot of effort you train every day like you usually uh, done for the last 15 years, but you don't grow. So for you watching this video, I hope that you can take some of Fedya's ideas and to step up your dancing level on, or just actually to refresh your uh, couple relation and to go tomorrow at the training in the studio 
and to train differently. Because maybe you all the time trying to change your partner and now you're listening for maybe the first time and you say, let her do. Let's see what she can, she can, she can do uh, by herself. Let me conclude this idea about trust. So trust your partner and instead of giving a small pieces of advices, try to make yourself busy on how you do your stuff. Busy with yourself and trust your partner. She's a professional dancer, you're a professional dancer. Uh, what you have to do to be a professional dancer? Dance. So do your thing and trust that she, uh, she do your thing. And this is a good, uh, for me, was a good, um, um, like, a, like you said, base, yeah. I would say it, it was a good base uh, when we start our conversations on the practice. Because, of course, we, you speak with each other. You feel you want to improve. Okay, let's do this, let's do that, blah, blah, blah. But the way how you speak and the way how you listen mm -hmm. to uh, critics mm -hmm. towards you is very important. Yeah, cool. But uh, <clears throat> you know what we didn't say at the beginning, actually? Uh, how you started to look at things in ballroom under from a different point of view. Who was the teacher, the professional, the specialist <laughs> that taught you that, that put you in that direction to think differently than other dancers? Because uh, not all professionals and not all those who achieved high results can think like that, as you are saying. Who, for where it started, actually? Yeah, uh, I'm... To be honest, I always had this uh, idea. W what kind of this idea? That we have uh, dancing, quality of movement, uh, biomechanics, uh, all this stuff. And uh, we have um, like me mechanical part of the dance. Mm -hmm. And we have also a performance part of the dance. And uh, from the childhood, I thought, okay, because my, my teacher, Richard Gliff, uh, said once, first, learn how to close your feet. And then you can think about uh, the soul, how to, how to feel. And uh, it's, a, it's a very good advice to become better in a biomechanical way, in a technical way. But also, on the other hand, I, hand, I have this... Um, I didn't draw a line for myself when it's enough of the quality lessons and quality development. And maybe it's time to open a new page. Maybe now I can already start. But then, of course, I realized that um, uh, both should be improving at the same time. doesn't matter what level of quality you have. You can always make it a little bit better by upgrading your performance level, yeah. how you sell it. But, of course, only if you work only on selling, you will never become a great dancer. It should be balanced. Yeah. You see, the quality and performance should grow together. It's similarly important. So, and um, originally I wasn't like this. Originally I was, originally I was only um, quality ori orientated. And then uh, we stuck with the results. The result didn't change. We stuck at the same position. Uh, I'll tell you a qu quick story about this. We made a final, uh, Blackpool final. And uh, next year we, we were off the final. So we stuck in the semi. And then we were for two years or a year and a half, semi-final, 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 same oh. result. And um, of course, everybody knows we feel the same. You try to improve. You feel that you improved. But then the result didn't change. And I all, always knew and I saw good couples, good examples uh, uh, for myself, people who worked with uh, Ruth Fermi. Mm -hmm. And uh, we always knew that he's a very professional in this uh, performance things, how you different style. And uh, then we realized, okay, it's time. Mm -hmm. So answering to your question, uh, the key point was bad results for a long time. We need to change something. And we knew, okay, definitely we need to invest more time to the way how we sell the dance, how we feel it a bit more instead of technical information only. And Ruth Vermi was the great influence for us. And uh, I don't know how to say thank you enough to him because he really made us... Because after three months of working with him, from semi-final, fifth place. Whoa. Three months. I don't... It, it's, it's not... Guys, it's not three months living in Holland. It was like trips. So it's... Uh, you understand? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, how, how, he, how does it work? Um, how a lesson with him uh, goes. I mean, what do you do in... Uh, sorry, I, 
I have to ask what you would ask him now. Mm. Uh, how is a lesson with Ruth for me? Great. What do you do in the lesson? Uh, a lot of different stuff. I must uh, I must say that uh, um, uh, Ruth is one of the most professional person I've ever met. And uh, what I mean by saying this, uh, he is picking a subject perfectly for each couple. Mm-hmm. What It's just what I see. And uh, what I was expecting from the lesson, I didn't get. And I get what I didn't expect, but what I needed. <laughs> Because cool. I've heard a lot, oh, it's about psychology, so they will speak about your mom, your childhood. And, um, you okay, will all cry, this, you yeah, will all split. This cliche. <laughs> what about my natural turn? I don't want to cry. But of course, actually, it's connected. The way you perceive the world is inside you. Mm-hmm. So if you want to change outside world, mm-hmm. you need to start from yourself. So you need to change you. And um, yeah, it's not answering your question, what was on the lesson, but uh, well, we, in the beginning, we, we actually started with this subject, uh, how to communicate with each other. And um, I, I must say thank you, Ruth, that you were very direct with us. And uh, uh, we, yeah, he helped us to control, make a discipline, Uh, how we speak with each other. It cool. was like a little rules. Don't say this, say this. Uh, and in the beginning, it feels very artificial. But in the end, you understand, yeah, actually, it's uh, quite organic and uh, it's much easier to practice mm-hmm. when you're not saying, uh, for example, a rule was like this. Never say um, problem. Try to find a con- um, solution. Yeah. So, so don't, don't talk negatively, talk positively. Yeah, and that makes you thinking before you say something. Yeah, you filter much, much yes. more than words that you would like normally you know. say. Yeah, of course, it sounds familiar. <laughs> you know, so because it's a normal reaction, you feel something. You dance. Uh, you we are very sensitive. All dancers very sensitive. We feel oh, this is the problem, and uh, natural reaction immediately say it. But this natural reaction actually is not leading uh, f- to a good things. Mm-hmm. It it starts in a pattern of. Uh, things that in the end will finish in the changing room and you're not practice yeah. anything but that's what i mean and uh, to to switch it to shift it uh-huh. in the first in the beginning you need to artificially change some habits that will start a pattern that will lead you to a first place for example don't say um, mistake think first if you know the conclusion and uh, know the solution uh-huh. you say it if you don't know the solution think don't say Maybe you will find it. Ask a, t- uh, ask a teacher or maybe uh, say to a um, partner, but uh, say that uh, I feel something is wrong. I'm not sure what's this. There's something that you know, is not like 100% uh, satisfying me. So please uh, pay, pay attention to that moment. You don't try to teach her or, or just argue that what are you doing? Okay? Yeah, yeah, This kind yeah. of thing. So we, we, on the third point about trustness, actually, we... Uh, We opened yeah. a, a whole like new, actually two or three subjects that actually can be good ideas for future videos. Mm-hmm. But I think now that uh, uh, we miss, not not that we miss, but we have to talk about one of the main parts in a couple relation, how to talk to each other. I know that you already started to say some wise words uh, coming from root, but What is, from your own experience, the best way to talk to each other in practice, in a competition, uh, to, to, to achieve the, the best way, the best relation possible? Mm-hmm. My experience is the best way uh, to talk to each other is not to talk to each other. Uh, but of course we can't... <laughs> End of the video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but honestly, yeah, sometimes we speak too much. In my case, uh, for sure, we speak. We had a long period of our career when we were sp- speak with each other too much instead of just doing things. And um, our body is much more experienced, actually, than our tongue. <laughs> And I explain what I see, what I mean. Uh, we have uh, all um, feelings. All of us have some feelings, and uh, trying to describe by words what does these feelings means to you, it's a hell of a difficult thing you know and uh, that's what exactly this is exactly what we're trying to do with our partners when we practice sometimes mm. so you feel some something like okay this is too too much uh, too much what okay too much tension mm-hmm. let's try to release okay how much release and all these sorts of uh, methods okay i feel that uh, our tone level is kind of 10 out of 10 let's make it uh, 3 out of 10 it's useful 
but uh, much easier to achieve it for me was through the feel, mm. without numbers. Mm. So you can, when you touch, you can feel, is it a harmony in touch or it's not a harmony in touch? It's too much tension, too less tension, if we're talking about tension, but mm -hmm. it's actually it touches all different subjects. Mm -hmm. So it's much easier to talk with each other by feel. For example, if you have a problem on the practice, instead of trying to describe it in the words, mm -hmm. it's much easier to show it by feel. So you just, for example, in ballroom, uh, I will dance the way I want and say, okay, can you feel this way? W what about this feeling in the dance? And uh, Anna will uh, reply, no. But okay. yeah, it's a joke. She always, she always say yes, we know, yeah? And uh, <laughs> not always, but sometimes, you know? I mean, uh, words is much slower than your body language. Mm. So try to transfer information through the feel, through the dance, not through the words. Okay. It's an it's advice, uh, advice, I don't like the word, but in my experience, I noticed that this way is much faster than trying to find some verbal explanation of the feeling. It's very mm. slow. Also about how to speak with each other, how to talk, to make it more practical, is uh, subject-orientated speak. If you know what are you practicing at the moment, it's much easier to talk to each other. For example, I am busy with my uh, footwork. I'm busy about articulation of the feet, uh, how the foot pressure feels. And uh, my partner is, for example, uh, commenting something about my presentation. I'm busy with the feet already. Oh, okay. It doesn't fit. It doesn't so fit. I, uh, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that uh, you need to say it to your partner immediately. Oh, actually, I'm thinking about my feet. Why are you talking about? This is not about this. You because if you start like this, you start to teach your partner again how you speak with me. Why you say things like me when I'm thinking about? Uh, I'm thinking about feet. You're saying things about uh, posture. So Why? This is not about this. But uh, you always can make a decision inside yourself. She is giving you yeah. information. Uh, for example, oh, I don't like your posture. You can listen to it, mm -hmm. but you stay on subject. You still uh, you you put it on your box. Yeah, for the, for next, the time. next for the yeah. next time exactly or next try for example. Mm -hmm. uh, but this uh, if you both know the subject of each other, it helps. Okay. If she knows that I'm working on my uh, foot pressure, um, it will be much more productive if she will comment <laughs> in my foot pressure. And if I know that she's working on her shape, I will speak about shape. Mm -hmm. Uh, if I want to make it more productive. Mm -hmm. This is point number two, to make it subject oriented. Also, another point is um, um, in different time of the season means different uh, talk. I mean, before the competition, it's a positive talk. Mm -hmm. We try to make it sometimes artificial because we also uh, un we understand that each, uh, um, each one of us under the pressure we have a st stress level is quite high mm -hmm. before the major competition. And uh, both of us trying to make it 100%. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessary to put a little bit more uh, weight on shoulders of each other. For example, saying, uh, don't, you, don't you, by the way, forget about this subject? Mm -hmm. And also don't try to, don't forget about this. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't help. So we try to positively support each other. Oh, did you, this was great. That was fun. Did you like this? I like that. Um, and this is much more productive, I felt. After the competition, this is analysis period. Mm -hmm. So this is when you really try to find out why you're not making this final, why you didn't win, uh, or maybe why it was so good this time. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a different type of talk. And I prefer to make this analysis talk not in the ballroom. So, uh, I don't want to. Yeah. Yes, I don't like to associate and connect ballroom, room, I mean, and uh, this analysis uh -huh. talk. You better sit in the changing room, in a cafe, in your flat, doesn't matter, and um, uh, really analyze, being deep about this. Uh, speak with your teacher, with your coach, mm -hmm. what can be better, look at the videos. In the ballroom, you, it's, it's a do it's time. time. Yeah, yeah, make it work. And uh, yeah, when you... Mm, I notice for myself, when you start to speak uh, and analyze too much in the ballroom, that becomes your habit. Mm -hmm. And then when you come next time, you're not here for dance, you're here to talk. So it's kind of another uh, habit uh, started. So talk outside the room, inside the room. Of course, you talk a bit, but differently, more positive, more subject-orientated, what you're going to do now. Yeah, that 
that's probably the top top three things about how to speak. Cool. Actually, while you were talking, uh, in my head was going on like, actually, how to build a practice time or a practice week, so a practice routine. It would be actually another cool idea for a mm -hmm. video. So subscribe because you will see a lot more on our channel. Fedya, I have to say really, really a big thank you because your words, thank you. even if I heard you uh, before and many times, still I'm listening to you like with a lot, a lot, a lot of interest. And I'm sure that also our audience was listen to your words and get inspiration from you. So for sure, we will see you again uh, on my channel. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like uh, see you, not a bye bye. And uh, with you guys, we will see you in the next video. So thank you very much. See you all. Bye. Cool. Cool. Oh. 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 Oh.